It's the Criterion. It's the Criterion. 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 In. 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 Hello, everybody. This is not Rachel. This is Conrado because we're here for the Criterion Project. And with me is your usual host, whose name is? Hey, Rachel. <laughs> this is so exciting. We are here. This is our first podcast that we'll have done for Criterion Project after the launch of the actual channel. So it's so exciting. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, so the music that you just heard, in case you didn't notice our wonderful theme song, was uh, composed by the great Michael Lorette. So we just want to thank him for that. Yes. And does he have, does he have social media? Do you know we could put his? Yes, absolutely. Um, he does have social media and we should put it in the description. I think he will be thrilled to see people. He's a really, he's a good friend of mine and he's a great um, you know, musician and songwriter. So yeah. he'll be into this. So it's really fun. And so, yeah, we got the Criterion channel. How do you kind of feel about it? Do you feel uh, like they've done a good job in their launch? Absolutely. I feel, I don't know about you, I feel great about it. I think this election is really exciting. And there's um, the way it's organized, I also like. Um, I think it's a very promising start. I wish I had more free time to watch more movies on the Criterion channel. Honestly, I want to watch everything they have. Yes, I agree. Uh, yeah, I was really impressed. I thought that it, uh, just the amount of selection that they had, the, uh, the different uh, collections I really enjoy uh, looking at, the, what different celebrities and different people pick is, is really interesting. Uh, to to see and my only real uh, I guess flaw with it is that I wish that they had it organized by categories a little bit better uh, so you could just look at all the romances that are on or mm -hmm. all the uh, I think it could be a little bit easier to navigate uh, yeah. the website. Well, they actually just added uh, all films. Uh, feature in which you can filter by genre and by year and by directors. So that's. I think a lot of people had that complaint when they first launched and they're oh, trying good. to do that. So they're already working on it, which is a good sign. But, that is good. Uh, you know, the feedback's coming through. Yes. So yeah, I was, I was really thrilled with it and it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's, and I like the fact that it's not, uh, that it's a combination of older films and more contemporary stuff. Yes. I think that that's um, good. Definitely. Have you watched, uh, how much, how many things have you watched? Um, I, I've just watched, I mean, ended up having a kind of a crazy week <clears throat> and uh, with my grandma's funeral and everything. And it's just, uh, so I've, I've just watched uh, this movie that we're going to talk about today. And uh, I watched one other uh, little uh, short uh, from mm -hmm. Agnes Varda. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's I've it. also had so a pretty crazy week, and and so I've watched some little shorts and that sort of thing when I've had some time. Um, and I watched this movie that we're going to talk about. I also watched Mildred Pierce, which was really great. I had never seen it before, oh, so I, really I recommend that to everyone. Um, maybe we'll be covering that sometime in the future in this podcast. Yeah, so that was the theme, uh, overall theme. Uh, this month was uh, uh columbia noir i think is how they phrased it uh so mm -hmm. uh that was one of them uh, mildred pierce was one of those options yes. uh that they mm -hmm. had columbia noir so uh yeah i hope to uh get a little bit of a breath and be able to to dive in and check out more of these but yeah, yeah. it looks pretty exciting yeah and well, one of the other uh, showcase collections when the uh, service launched was uh, one which featured the movie that we're going to talk about today, uh, the directed by Agnes Varda section. Yes. And um, I assume that was partly because um, Agnes Varda very sadly passed away on March 29th of this year. 
And I know that is part of the reason why we wanted to do this movie that we're going to talk about. And I feel like Criterion also showcased her because of, you know, as a in memoriam. Yeah. And <clears throat> she, uh, she was an incredible director and she uh, was part of sort of this French new wave kind of mm -hmm. uh, era and she was married to uh to the filmmaker Jacques Demay and yeah. who did uh great movies uh, the umbrellas of Chabot, probably his most famous movie uh which was a big inspiration for La La Land uh so if uh, and Damien Chazelle so if you like if you like La La Land you should check out the umbrellas of Chabot. uh but yeah Agnes Varda I I was introduced to her first with Faces Places uh, mm -hmm. documentary, which you introduced to me, actually. And then I watched it and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and she did both fiction and documentaries. Yes. Um, I actually um, um, had only seen her documentaries before uh, watching this movie for today. And in case, I mean, I'm people will know this already because it's probably in the description of the episode, but we're doing the movie Cleo from five to seven, which is one of her early movies and it's a fiction film, but I was mostly familiar with Agnes Varda for her documentaries in which she also appears. And it's kind of like the host. They're very, they're kind of like diary documentaries, most of them that I've seen. And part of why they like them so much is because she is one of the most, um, I don't know, She's like one of the most fascinating, nice, interesting, funny, like she has the most amazing personality I've ever seen. I don't know if you agree with me with that. She just seems like a great lady. Yeah, she's super funny. I mean, I think it's kind of telling of her humor uh, is at the, uh, at the Academy Awards, she sent like a cardboard cutout yeah stuff, that's right for all the photos and stuff mm -hmm. and uh, i think that she she's somebody who obviously was serious about her art but didn't take herself too seriously that's an excellent way to put it i totally agree with that i think that's one of the things that's so appealing about her work i think is that she has this very serious and you know deep thoughts but she expresses them in a very playful sort of yeah um yeah very um creative sort of way that it's not so serious you know it's always about uh game and uh creativity with her in my opinion i agree yeah she the before this i had seen faces places which is all about her and this uh this artist photographer, yeah photographer okay? uh that go around and do sort of these installation pieces and and i was a little bit nervous i guess what before i saw it because i was just, i think sometimes that installation art can be the worst it can be so <laughs> annoying and <laughs> so uh i don't know just full of itself it's not not my favorite usually and uh, but i just thought that every it was so cool because it really showed how much the art and being sort of featured the way that they are met meant so much to the people that were getting the piece done because a lot of times installation art can just be like very uh, like sh i don't know trying to almost impose on people to like shock them and get a response uh, oh. of this is my weird thing that i'm doing in your, in your city or whatever I'm going to have a, I don't know, just a, a <laughs> giant statue of Marilyn Monroe or something like that or whatever. And, uh, and to see what people say, and uh, this was just about making people happy, which uh, was nice. And yeah. I, don't know, I just really, I was just surprised how much I liked the art. And then to have uh, her and this, uh, I forget his name, JR. JR. Mm -hmm. uh the the two of them were just so much fun and they were really just trying to make people happy which was which was nice yeah mm -hmm. um absolutely but um like i said we're not really here to talk about faces places we're here to talk about 
Cleo from five to seven, yeah. which is, by the way, criterion number 73, if you have all of your criterions lined up. Ah, um, very good. Okay, great. Yeah, so Cleo from five to seven is about a woman named the aforementioned entitled Cleo, and she's basically a singer uh that uh she finds out that she has uh cancer or that she might have cancer and she's waiting to hear the results of what okay. can happen she goes to this tarot card reader who at the beginning who tells her that uh there's uh that there that there is is not good things in her future that she's doomed this is really bad and so she's upset and uh so she basically kind of spends the day kind of uh talking to different people there's her maid uh for uh that she's talking with in, uh, for a brief period there's her lover who kind of comes in there's her uh songwriters and pianists and that come and talk to her for a little time she goes through the city and she uh she kind of hears her music in different cafes and areas and her friend Dorothy at a certain point she meets and talks and she, the whole time she's just kind of thinking about life and her life and uh -huh. uh, this this news and she's so waiting to hear back she ends up meeting this soldier uh that named Antoine who is also uh, sort of thinking about life and the meaning of his life and and uh what uh what this war that he's fighting in algeria what uh, is the point of it all and hmm. uh you know, by the end she she gets her her diagnosis and uh and that you know so it's just kind of a, a day in her life and thinking about this mm -hmm. that she might be doomed yeah very existential very french yes <laughs> um but also i think it's important to mention that the basically uh the conceit of the movie is that we're following her in real time right from like the title says from five to seven yes. really it's from five to six thirty in the movie but you know creative license was taken in the title i guess yeah um but the idea is that it's it's all unfolding in real time and we're just following cleo uh, during these two hours basically as she tries to process the fact that she may or may not be dying from cancer so what what did you think of the movie um i i liked it i i was thinking about the movie eight and a half which i did not like i know that's like not elevated to me to say but i just thought that the lead character in eight and a half was just somebody i didn't care about at all and just thought was a jerk i didn't understand why like it looked pretty but i didn't understand why all these women were so interested in this this loser uh in my opinion and so but i think this does a much better job of having the same kind of themes but uh with a much more endearing and uh likable character lead character uh, in in cleo that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I agree with you to some degree. I mean, I don't know about eight and a half. I haven't seen it in a long time, but um, about the character of Cleo, I think it's very interesting the way in which she is. I feel like she becomes uh, more endearing to me and more likable the more the movie goes on in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously at the beginning, I feel bad for her because she might, uh, be sick and, and have cancer but um, I think the more time I spend with her the more I understand uh, what is underneath you know what I mean and start to feel like I know her better and mm -hmm. um, that to me was very interesting that she started out a bit as a as a bit of a mystery to me and as it goes along we kind of learn more about her um, yeah I agree and it's interesting because she is kind of a pushover in certain ways she's kind of a strong woman but then she's kind of not i feel like there's an interesting kind of balance there hmm. yes um um so on the criterion channel and the uh directed by agnes varda section 
I found out last night there's actually two sections, one with all her movies and then another with a, a bunch of short documentaries in which she talks about her movies. And there's one about this one. Mm. So I watched it last night. And one of the things that I learned, I first of all, I recommend it to anyone who wants to watch Cleo to also watch this uh, short documentary. It's like 30 minutes. Mm. And it's really cool to see Agnes Varda talk about it. It's years later. And she reunites with all the, the actors that were in the movie. And you can see them when they're older and, you know, reminiscing about what it was like to film the movie. Has a bunch of great trivia about the making of the movie. And one of the things that she talks about is how um, she sees that in the first half of the movie, Cleo is very much sort of like defined by the people who are looking at her. And she right. looks at her in the mirror a lot. And she's very, she's obviously a singer and she's very pretty and she's very vain. At one point she says, she looks at herself in the mirror and she says something like, you know, thinking about the possibility she might have cancer. And she goes, well, as long as I'm beautiful, I'm alive or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through, after she sings that song at the piano that is so sad, she kind of has this revelation and she almost like strips her clothes and her wig and she totally transforms and starts to really see the life that is happening around her and not so much, you know, she becomes the person who sees other people instead of just being seen. And that's what sort of like transforms her in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. That is uh, something I noticed as well that uh, particularly as she, uh, by the time she meets the soldier, I feel like she's kind of uh, come a little bit renewed, if that makes sense. And uh, mm -hmm. she's she's ready to face whatever is gonna is gonna come. And you know she's had these interactions with her friend, and her friend is definitely sort of more uh, Dorothea. I think there is more mm -hmm. sort of practical, mm -hmm. and she's a little bit more kind of. Uh, she's like a free spirit right yeah 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 that's a good way to describe it and she all at the very beginning she sees this female taxi driver and and she's just very kind of a uh, sort of th maybe threatened i don't know if that's the correct word but she's not she's not that impressed with this taxi driver but um and so it's sort of interesting to see the difference between that experience and then by the end kind of what she's thinking mm-hmm Absolutely. I also think it's interesting how, you know, by the end of the movie, um, when she finally gets her diagnosis, not to spoil it, but it almost feels like the diagnosis is not so important anymore. It's almost like tossed off because now she has like, her life has changed and she's, you know, she sees life in a different way, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's sort of like her journey. So why don't we talk a little bit just maybe our less our our new to criterion uh, listeners what is actually existentialism in this period of french new wave uh in your uh <laughs> you're not, not that either <laughs> of us is experts that's a big question but what in mm -hmm. your mind is that uh, yeah the same well the one about existentialism is that after the second world war in france um there was a lot of um philosophers who were starting to think about um, the almost the futility of existence, right? Because the Second World War has been such a horrible thing that happened that everyone was wondering, like, what is the point of existing? Um, uh, how do we live in this world? And almost like starting to really um, analyze um, your existence in a in a different way that had been in the past. Um. Yes, and it's sort of inspired by particularly the writings of Kierkegaard, who mm -hmm. uh, is a very interesting uh, philosopher. And it's all about his idea was that you, uh, that if you were going to do something that you wanted it to be as sort of perfect, you wanted to make the perfect leap is one of the things that he says and so it's all there's sort of a, a an idea of kind of perfecting oneself and getting closer and mm -hmm. closer to uh the, the, there's you know people like jean paul sartre was a mm -hmm. and that sort of that justifies kind of your existence is your continual strive for perfection yeah and the fact that you can think and uh 
I think something that Kierkegaard also says, I'm looking at Wikipedia now, um, <laughs> that, um, you know, that it's the individual that is responsible for giving meaning to life and living it passionately and sincerely. And it's not necessarily something that comes from society or religion or those sort of structures, but it's like it depends on each person to examine their own lives and give it meaning, you know? Yeah. Um, and so right. movies like... Uh, like eight and a half or Cleo five to seven are the idea is it's about these sort of characters wondering what the whole purpose of their life is, why they, uh, why they're doing what they're doing and, uh, eventually reading, reaching some enlightened stage, like mm-hmm. an enlightened phase. And a lot of times the imagery can be really abstract and different, uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's interesting. And sometimes they can be uh, uh, challenging. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think this one is pretty, pretty straightforward. There's nothing too uh, weird, I guess, about it. It's pretty, uh, some people will say, oh, there's not enough story. But mm-hmm. uh, I think she does a pretty good job in this of uh, letting you experience this character and making her journey kind of nuanced enough that I didn't feel bored. I was not mm-hmm. bored watching this movie. Yeah, and it's also very, um, I think it's, a, because it's episodic, because she goes from one place to another, it's got like this little vignettes of all the things that she mm-hmm. uh, does, right? There's a moment when they go and watch the movie, which I think that movie is really fun. Um, you know, the silent yeah. movie that they see with the, guy with the, is it like a fire truck or no it's the ambulance right and then yeah, the yeah. buckets of water or something it's like yeah um so you have just little vignettes of different moments the part when she sings the song is another good example of just like there's a lot of variety i think in in what goes on and it's again it's you know a some signal of uh Varda's style which is like very playful going from one thing to another um always keeping in mind what the big picture is in the back of her head yeah i mean and she sort of is thinking why am i am i going through this what what is it all for and you get this sense that she doesn't really respect what she's doing her she doesn't like her music she doesn't like when it's played and uh she the i don't know and then when you see this soldier later on the Mm -hmm. kind of facing the same struggle like what yeah. is my life for if i'm going to die in this war what is the whole purpose mm-hmm. yeah so it's really the meeting of those of those two that they're both going through something similar and they have this connection of you know this existential question of why was it all for mm-hmm. um i feel like it's sort of where we arrive at the end yeah yeah and it is beautifully filmed i you know the love the the black and white is great Mm-hmm. and uh yeah i think it's a it's a although, uh, good one yeah although the opening is in color right um i don't know what you thought of that when she's doing the tarot cards oh you're right i forgot about that <laughs> yeah i thought that was an interesting choice in the documentary um agnes varda says that to her the the world of the tarot was almost like a fantasy world and that's why it was in color and the black and white was the more realistic which i thought was interesting because you know nowadays i think we would think of the color as the realistic right one and black and white as the fantasy or like the not real yeah. life but back then i think black and white was seen as a more realistic sort of you know newspaper photo journalism sort of world that was the reality and color was like the musical fantasies and that sort of thing yeah, yeah I thought that was funny yeah that is good um yeah. let me tell you a little bit more about the things i found out in this documentary which i think yeah. i really recommend it it's full of really great you know bits um one of the things that i was really excited about is that apparently the sort of like cleo's trajectory in the movie she goes from one place to another and you can actually have that same journey in Paris if you go now because it's all it was all filmed in chronological order and it's all traced in a map in a way that it makes sense that she could go from one place to another in an hour and a half. Huh. So yeah. if you go to Paris now, you could like, you know, recreate the trajectory and like see all the places where they filmed because they shot on location in Paris. Um, 
and I mean, I'll, some of the places are gone now, but you can, uh, you know, recreate it if you want to. I thought that was cool. I feel like I want to do it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there's also, uh, they talk about how one of the really difficult things about shooting that way was that they had to synchronize all the clocks in the city and in the background so that it makes sense that they tell the actual time that is in the movie since the whole conceit of the movie is that's from 5 to 6.30. And as things happen, you have these little title cards that tell you what time it is. So, you know, every single clock in the background had to be synchronized. And that was, they show a bunch of shots of how many clocks are in the movie that I didn't realize when I was watching it. But there's clocks everywhere and they're all synchronized. That was very impressive to me. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. That's interesting. Yeah. So those are all kinds of trivia things that you can find out if you watch this little documentary that I feel very strongly about, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely will have to watch that. I, I missed it. But um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's, I really enjoyed it. Did you, what was your sort of overall uh, experience you, you, compared to maybe her other films that you'd seen? Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot and I was a little nervous because like I said I had only seen her documentaries and I thought that a a lot of the reason why I liked her documentaries was because she was in them and I found her personality so infectious and so interesting so I was a little worried that a movie in which she's not in how would I feel about it but I liked it a lot and um, that says also a lot because I don't really like French movies often. Um, I don't know why, but I seem to have like a bit of a resistance to them. Um, but this movie, I I really liked, and I feel like I really connected with the um, what she was trying to go for in this movie. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it too. I I think that I had I was a little bit nervous about it, maybe for some of those reasons, but also just because these really esoteric films. Uh, can be more admirable than enjoyed mm-hmm. and you know like I like I said I didn't enjoy eight and a half I mm-hmm. uh, sometimes like that I like the four into blows I think that's really good but uh, I don't know just some of the other ones can just be a little much for me uh, but I don't know this one I felt like I was bonded enough to Cleo and her her situation that I thought it worked it worked for me Great. So what, let's go into our questions of the yes. week. Um, what do you think makes this a Criterion film? <laughs> like everything about it is so Criterion. <laughs> I mean, the yeah. way it's filmed, the cinematography, the, and then the existential themes, mm-hmm. so much, very little plot. Uh, all of those things just make it very independent and very, uh, very non kind of mainstream. And so, yeah, it just screams criterion for sure. Yeah. I also think there is these, I, I think every Agnes Varda film in a way is a criterion film just because she's such a uh, pioneering figure in the history of cinema, especially in France, right? She um, basically, she made what people consider to be the very first French New Wave movie in the 50s. And she is one of the few female filmmakers to have come out of that uh, movement. So she is obviously a very important figure in that way. And I think uh, Cleo in particular strikes me as a very interesting uh, meeting point between existentialism and also feminism, right? And looking at at women in a very um, serious but honest way and not just as, you know, like uh, heroic, like, um, what am I trying to say? Like ideal figures, but as as people who have like very complex inner lives and, you know, good sides and bad sides and have to go through all of this and who go through uh, experiences that teach them something and change them like Cleo does. Um, So yeah, I think it's um, definitely a criterion film in that sense um what yeah i agree else? with you i agree with you i think that it's not a feminist movie in the sense of a like a, a kick butt character kind of the, i feel like that we have this idea that that strong female characters have to be strong 
in that kind of almost masculine sense these days mm-hmm. to be a strong character whereas she is flawed uh, but she's dynamic and grows and, and and changes as a person which i think is strong it takes uh, so i i agree i agree with what you're saying for sure mm-hmm. so yeah it screams criterion there's no doubt about it great um and w- so given all of these like things that feel so criterion about it where do you think it ranks in our um pretentious scale <laughs> do you think it's uh what were our options again do you think it's uh pretentious but worth it do you think it's pretentious and uh empty or do you think it's like not pretentious at all what do you think uh, i would say maybe mm-hmm. pretentious but worth it <laughs> i think yeah I think I think so too. Although I feel like all those Agnes Vardis movies, what I like about them, another thing that I like about them is that they are pretentious. But like you said, they almost like undercut their pretentiousness with humor and the comedic yeah. things and that sort of thing. So that makes them very, in my opinion, very accessible. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Or more so, at least, than some of the other, like you know, Jean Luc Godard or some other oh, French New Wave stuff. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So who do who would you recommend this movie to do you think i think it would be a great movie for particularly for sort of young uh maybe gender studies students <laughs> i think it'd be a really <laughs> good one for that uh because i think that they have sort of this idea of the type of a woman that you have to be and i think that this would be an interesting discussion to have with them about her and about her journey that that would i think be interesting yeah that's a good call i would say i get the feeling that existentialism and those sort of questions always go with like teenagers or college students yeah that sort of thing so i think like young people who are a little artsy that are like maybe want to see something that is like fun but also speaks to their internal dread i think maybe can find something to like in mm-hmm. cleo yeah. yeah for sure all right any final thoughts about this uh yeah i think people should check it out i think this is definitely worth your time just check it out so i yeah i had if i was gonna give it a score i had it at an eight out of ten that's a pretty good score and i think i would also go uh, an eight or a nine i really yeah. liked it mm-hmm. so all right well so our next episode we're very excited uh that we're going to do uh it got to be my pick this month which is fun and we are going to talk about the uh, documentary gray gardens which i love and it's going to be really fun because uh, it's a real fly on the wall uh we're just going to follow these two crazy uh women <laughs> uh that was done by the Maley's brothers and uh in 1975 uh big and little edie and they were related to jacqueline onassis kennedy uh but they were living in this house in the hamptons that's uh kind of shambles uh cool. but they're very unique very interesting characters people and particularly little Edie is just an icon and I'm really <laughs> excited to talk about it. And yeah. so if you want to watch that, uh, then uh, we'll be ready for next month. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And I have never seen it. So I'm really excited to finally see it because I've heard so much about it and I've seen a lot of like parodies of it already. I feel like a lot of people, maybe they don't know what the movie is when they watch it we'll find out oh i've seen like people make fun of this before Mm -hmm. so i think i'm gonna have a lot to say it's gonna be fun yeah it'll be good so all right well great this was a lot of fun and so let us know if you are listening if you've seen cleo five to seven what you think and if you have seen any of other of agnes vardis films let us know what you think of them and that would be yes Yeah, we really want to hear from you if you're out there listening. Um, And we want to hear all your thoughts about the movies that we talk about, what movies you want us to talk about, how do you feel about the Criteria channel if you're subscribing, and things like that. We really want to talk with you and have a conversation. Yes, definitely do. So uh, put your comments in the comment section, or uh, we can talk about it on Twitter. People find you. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Coco Hits New York. And I also have a blog, which is CocoHitsNY.wordpress.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, and on iTunes and YouTube. And so if you're listening on iTunes, if you could give us your ratings and reviews, really appreciate that. And if you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that too. And we are working to get our own feed uh, in for the Criterion Project in the next couple of months, but uh, it will you know, just be a process. So we're excited. We are excited. <laughs> so, all right. Well, great. We'll look forward to next month. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. Bye.